Hey, I just wanted to get on here really quick. Um, today is quite the anniversary, probably uh, not the one that you would think of or think I would like to remember, but six years ago uh, in 2016, uh, today was actually February 29th because it was a leap year, uh, but you know, it's not this year. So, uh, today, March 1st, six years ago, um, it was a very different day for me. Um, I actually started the morning by, uh, trying to commit suicide. And I began texting people, um, just nonchalantly, my goodbyes without trying to send up any real red flags um, because I didn't want people to know and um, I was uh, just in a lot of pain and had been struggling with a lot of depression from bipolar disorder and um, you know, had been to psychiatric hospitals before and on lots of medicine and tried lots of things and um, was just utterly hopeless. There just, there was nothing. Uh, my kids were going to be better off without me. Um, you know, my husband's life was going to be a lot easier without me. Um, I was teaching at the time, you know, um, my students would be better, you know, just, just all the things. And, um, so I, I tried to overdose that morning and, um, I got rushed to the hospital in an ambulance and, um, I don't remember much about that. Uh, I know that Jason had to pry my hand open to keep me from taking even more stuff because the pills that I had taken weren't working fast enough or weren't working. Thank God, literally. And, um, it's, it's a little black and fuzzy after that. I slightly remember getting put into an ambulance. I was taken to the CCU. I had to stay there for three days. A nurse had to stay in my room 24 hours a day for those three days. Um, I don't remember day one. I remember only at dinner time them trying to get me to eat, but I, I couldn't. Um, day two, few more memories. Day three, I was up and talking, asked the nurse why she had to be in there because I knew that wasn't normal protocol. And um, she said, you know, when someone has tried to commit suicide, they, they have to stay in there with them. And I felt a little bit better, just a little bit. And then I was met with a Sumner County Sheriff's Department police officer, uh, officer and um, he had to handcuff me and put me in the back of a sheriff's patrol car for my own safety and for his. And I've never been arrested in my life. Never been in a cop car. Never been handcuffed. It was just all the things that day. And he transported me to a psychiatric hospital where I was involuntarily admitted. And... Um, I asked him, was that normal? Was this something that he normally did? Was this, obviously I'd never been in this situation before. I'd been to a psychiatric hospital, but never in the back of a patrol car. And um, he told me that he thought it was a waste of taxpayer dollars for him to transport me. And so... Needless to say, we did not talk the rest of the ride because there wasn't anything to be said. I was very sick 
and I was a productive member of society. I was a teacher, you know, I was a mom and I was just met with just cold, compassionless facts, I suppose, according to him, you know, that this was a waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, I didn't ask him to take me just <laughs> quiet. Anyway, but I remember this anniversary because that's what it took. Because I didn't tell you that I was an atheist at the time. And that's what it took. That was the straw. That was, that was the point. That was the turning point and that led me to Jesus. So I absolutely did not find Jesus that day. I didn't find him on day three. I, I didn't find him in the hospital. But that was the turning point that led me to share this with a group I was already connected with. That led me to somebody who had the gift of spiritual healing, who was by trade a thoracic surgeon, so he's very science-minded. If you know me, that's what my background's in. That's that's what I taught. That's what I majored in was was science. And so, um, in a group I was I was just in tonight, I was I was just reminded of that, and I I just wanted to share that that you know that that horrible day and. Not, not that I could ever compare to Jesus, but, you know, some people that I've spoken to um, that are especially atheists think it's really weird, the cross. Like, why would we want to remember that? Why do we symbolize that? Why, why would you want to wear that around your neck? And that's it. That's what Jesus was willing to do for you, for me, was to lose everything, to die for us. And so, although it's, it's very sad, it has a very happy ending. And, and that's the same for me. And, you know, my ending hasn't ended yet, but overall, it's going to have a happy ending because I did find Jesus. I did accept him. And my whole life, my eternity is different. Let's not even talk about my life right now. My eternity is different. Uh, I'm changing, you know, it, it, a generational curse, if you will. So that's why we wear the cross. That's why I remember this anniversary because really it, it led to life. Jesus dying led to life. It led to my life. And I'm not a selfish person, but, you know, even if you need to be, sometimes we need to be selfish and just say, Jesus died for me, you know, because he did and he, and he died for you too. And you can tell yourself that too, but sometimes I need to feel that and remember that, you know, that day close to dying, the turning point. That's what got me here. That's what got the changed relationship, the changed life, the changed eternity. I'm just rambling at this point. I just love Jesus a whole lot. And so um, anyway, I, I hope you guys are doing amazing. And that if you ever need somebody to talk to about anything that is not going to judge you, I've probably been there, done that, watched it, saw it, helped somebody through it, you know, feel free feel free. Cause even if I haven't been through it, you know, I'm not going to judge you. And I just, I just need you to know that, that somebody loves you very much because I, I didn't know that. I didn't feel that. And so I love you guys. <laughs>